They were deliberately cut. The cooperative housing program was cut. It became impossible for anybody to, to set up a, a, a new social housing project or a new cooperative project. Everybody was forced more and more into this private rental market. And we have in a city where the private rental market at the low end is also being jacked up you know, by the owners. And people are, are starting to feel the pinch there. Because it's always more, going to be more profitable to rent at market rates than it is to go under a subsidy program. You know, profit driven. Well, it's profit driven, but not only that, an agency under a subsidy program has got to do a lot of bureaucratic work. It's got to follow rules, it's got to do this and that. And it's a lot easier to convert all this, as much of this as you can, to market housing. And then it's, you know, it's well, like, you that. know, there, there's. Um, Tenants' Rights Action Coalition in the Lower Mainland, but it's not over here. The only thing we've got here is TABS, is Together Against Poverty Society, and they've been cut back too. They're overrun. You know, they, they only have like two part-time advocates, and the demand is, you know, these people are really stressed out. They do the best that they can, but they're really stressed out. Yeah. So that's why we're hoping that we can step into that role, you know, for those people in social housing um, that are finding problems. Because if everything's okay and you know you're not being hassled, there's no need for you know any kind of union or association or residence association. It's when things go wrong. It's when people you know get stepped on that they need the help, and that's when people find there isn't help. There's, there's not even a way to get legal aid or legal assistance or even legal advice. Like there's one like part-time place from students. So is this what they call the criminalization of the poor? Well, that's the, that's the next step, you know, is to you know declare mar marijuana possession a criminal offense. And then it's quite obvious that, that the Harpago, its plan is to build U.S.-style mega prisons and fill it with as many people as they can. They Shameful. look upon the homeless and the poor as essentially criminal, even if they haven't done anything wrong. They're, you know, they've got criminal tendencies. We're going to put them away to keep everybody safe. It's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. And I, I appeal to people who are in a comfortable middle class to realize that they're, but for the grace of God, go themselves. And that this has got to be stopped. It's got to be turned around. We need a compassionate society and not a punitive system. The faith groups are feeling this very much. I, yeah. I worked. I've worked with the Faith in Action. I'm a Buddhist myself. I believe I'm in, in, in compassionate intervention. Yeah. And I've worked with the, the faith groups, the, the Anglican and the Catholic and, and other faiths. And the faith groups are finding that they're being downloaded onto. Like the government is cutting services and then it's leaving it up to the charity groups, which is primarily the faith groups, to step in and take up the slack. And, you know, like money is tight for tighter for everybody, and Canada is not generous in giving to charities, and they're finding it harder and harder to do. They're yeah, just putting the these groups. these thin mats on in the, in church basement floors, just you know when the weather gets cold. I mean, it's heartbreaking for the faith groups, exactly. You know, who are all volunteers to go and have to do this, and 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 like see that the people go out and they. You know, they're left on their own devices, they're not getting the treatment they deserve, they come back the next day, and even sometimes they come back and they come. Government is supposed to be there to provide for the needs of people. It's not supposed to be there to provide for just the, the mega corporations that, you know, move into these services. All, all services are, are under attack. Sewage, water, you know. BC Hydro, Air. everything is being privatized. So, you know, the money lenders are now in government and it's not government for people anymore. I think a lot of people know this. I think people are very upset with the way government's going. And I think that slowly more people are getting to the point where they're prepared to stand up and say, look, we've seen the problem, it's us. Our government cannot behave this way. Yeah. But it's a hard struggle. It's a really hard struggle. You know, I've I think there's more community amongst the street folk than there is in the subsidized housing. 
you know, because you know we've gone into survival people in subsidized housing, yeah. and there's an atmosphere of fear. You know, where in in the worst cases, people are afraid that their neighbor is going to turn them in for doing something. You yeah. know, so that's why yeah. it's very difficult. It's been very difficult for us to, you know, develop our organization. I mean, you know, we've been going about six months. And it's not an easy thing to do is to say to people, look, don't be afraid. You can stand up for your rights. You do have rights. And if we do this together, you know, we can, we can assert ourselves. Totally. And